As an avid painter and art fanatic, I'm incredibly fascinated by the power art has in shaping our perceptions and outlooks in various cultures. Whether it be the intricate mosaic serpents of the Aztecs or the highly decorated masks of the Ashanti, I'm always in awe of the work of various cultures create and express through their work. The skill, craftsmanship, and beauty exhibited through their art ceases to amaze me. And for me, deep down fosters a deep respect and reverence for these cultures. But to understand the power art has in shaping our perceptions, it is important to consider the underlying basis and definition of art. For art can be defined as the visual manifestations of thought, the metamorphosis of abstract ideas into tangible form where this transformation, intentional or unintentional, gets translated for viewers like us to engage with. You see, when we view art, we are engaging in a visual dialogue, a conversation with the artist's work where we form judgments and conceptions on the idea the artist's work is representing. And this visual dialogue is incredibly critical. For when we engage in this conversation, we are exchanging ideas, experiences, and concepts that ultimately form classifications. And these classifications have helped us to identify and distinguish various cultures, regions, and people, allowing us to appreciate the beauty and diversity of the world around us. However, it is when we become over-dependent and rigid of these classifications, bias, stereotypes, and cultural superiority begin to take form. When the artists create and the viewers perceive with this mindset, social division, prejudice, and discrimination start to rise. And unfortunately, this type of dialogue has been taking momentum in our society. This is a frame from the 1915 movie Birth of a Nation, a film that details two families during the Civil War Reconstruction. This film also depicts black men portrayed by black-faced actors as aggressive and lacking intelligence. In this particular scene, the black-faced actor is seen as the aggressor, the one at fault. And following this movie, there was a resurgence of Ku Klux Klan membership, and by 1925, there were over 4 million reported Klan members. This is a painting titled American Progress by John Guest, depicting the ideology of Manifest Destiny, America's westward expansion. This painting and its message became popularized, arguably overlooking the hardships and struggles endured by the natives. This is a cartoon titled Pacific Chivalry by Thomas Nast, depicting a Chinese immigrant getting his hair pulled back. Though the, though the artist aims to show sympathy with the immigrants, the figure is illustrated as a character of weakness and inferiority, juxtaposed against the aggressor who is shown in control and upstream. And these are only few of the many examples of art that have been exchanged in our visual dialogue. And never do we really see minorities in positions of strength and power and Truth be told, this has been more commonly exchanged than this. And though examples of the past, the visual dialogue we participate in is cumulative, built upon by past exchanges between the artists and viewers, and as a result, have an influence in the way we, as participants in the visual dialogue, perceive various communities. And many of these classifications that have been, that have been exchanged in our dialogue becomes so accepted in our culture that it not only affects the way we perceive minority groups, but affects the way minority groups see themselves. A well-known 1940 study, the Clark Dell Experiment, conducted by psychologists Kenneth and Amy Clark, were done to see how black children between the ages of six to nine would respond to questions associated with positive or negative traits. Some of the questions asked were, show me the doll that you would like to play with. Show me the doll that is a nice doll. And show me the doll that is the best bad doll. And following the questions asked, they were asked to choose either doll in response, and majority of the children associated the black doll with the negative traits. This same study was done again in 2016, Italy, and the results are too strikingly similar. And so many of these visual representations have become integrated and a part of the journeys of the underrepresented, not just in America, but around the world as well. And this is, without a doubt, influenced by the visual dialogue that has been and currently taking place. Even today, bias and judgments surrounding ethnic communities are reinforced. There is a clear underrepresentation of minority artists today. Never do we really see works by women, people of color, or queer individuals get similar recognition their fellow artists receive, 
and when they are portrayed, they are depicted by an outside perspective. A study done in 1989 by activist group Guerrilla Girls shows that less than 5% of the artists in the modern art section of the Metropolitan Museum of Art are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. This same study was done again in 2011 and shows that less than 4% of the artists in the same section are women, but 76% of the nudes are female. Even today, amongst progressive change, women are often subjected to hypersexualization in media and advertisements. Another study done in 2012 shows the lack of working fine artists and art school grads in the United States. And from this same study shows the lack of women working as fine artists. And we must consider the consequences when a group of individuals are underrepresented and misrepresented of their experiences and journeys. As contributors and perceivers of visual dialogue, how does the visual context we consume affect the way we perceive other people? And it is from this misrepresentation and underrepresentation that we often forget that they are artists of value too not subjects of inferior fascination or cultures to be fetishized, but people with the vision, creativity, and the passion to create works that express their experiences. The circle of fine artists is exclusive, lacking diversity and representation, and more often limited to a Western demographic. And their arts are exchanged more frequently in our visual dialogue than works of other cultures, and they're praised and valued at a much higher level, and thus, the voices of the underrepresented are often lost in translation, appropriated by others who perceive their culture's art as primitive or undeveloped. However, there are a new wave of artists that have been contributing to this visual dialogue, creating cataclysmic change in the way we perceive communities. With globalization, artists of all backgrounds are rising from the underground, shifting the direction of our visual dialogue. For many of these artists, art is a way to reclaim and reclassify their identities to represent their backgrounds and raise awareness towards the experiences their communities have been facing. Artists such as Grisolda San Martin, a documentary photographer, and Rogelio Gutierrez challenges stereotypes surrounding immigration and Hispanic community. Paul Anthony Smith, a Jamaican-born artist, explores his relationship with Jamaican history, culture, and identity, redefining the experiences many of people of African di diaspora have experienced. And Nicholas Glennon, a Native American artist, uncovers the contrasting experiences between Native and non-Native societies, redefining the experiences his journey and his community has faced. And Reiko Fuji, a Japanese American artist, and Cindy Chi, a Chinese American artist, incorporates traditional art styles from their culture with fine art traditions. And these are only few of the many past examples of artists today that are creating works that are challenging past beliefs in our visual dialogue, redefining our perceptions and creating differences in the way we perceive communities, and as a result, affecting the way we, as viewers, participate in this conversation. And many of these visual representations we have institutionalized are rigid and must be re-identified in order to further our society into a more unified and equitable place. And as art from the basis of these past classifications, art can serve to reclassify these same judgments. And though this responsibility rests upon the artists themselves, we, as viewers, as participants in visual dialogue, can, can contribute great change. For these new wave of artists are not the only ones making a difference. We can too. And it begins with how we participate in this conversation. For it is up to us to challenge the visual context we consume, to question the classifications being formed, and ultimately acknowledge that we, as contributors of visual dialogue, and as viewers, can make a difference. Thank you.